So what's going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here and we are back today with another video where I wanna talk about a very particular card that just got hit on the ban list, um, Cyframe Gear Gamma. If you knew anything about Gamma before the ban list, then you would know that it was basically the best hand trap pre ban list post Cyberstorm access because one, it allowed Super Heavy Samurai to play around just about every hand trap, right? Like you couldn't draw them on the bike. Like you had to hold your hand traps for when they had monsters, which is like, they would have already had the steam to keep going, right? Like they had plays around Nib, Ash, Gamma only made those plays more consistent. They had a play around Ghost Ogre, right? Like Ghost Ogre on the Wakashi is really significant, but because of Gamma, it was like, you shouldn't Ghost Ogre Wakashi unless they control the monster. If they started with Wakashi, that Wakashi is resolving because on the other side of that, the chance of them having the Gamma and summoning an Excel Synchro into the Baron was not something that a lot of people wanted to deal with. So people who played Gamma were pretty well off and a lot of decks played Gamma last format. A lot of decks like wanted to use Gamma for multiple reasons. And now that Gamma is limited, I wanted to go over, is it even still worth playing? So first off, I want to look at the OCG metagame real quick because OCG has had Gamma limited for a while, but like you start to look at some of their lists, Super Heavy Samurai and maybe not this most recent, it's still post Sayak and post Duelist Nexus. You see Super Heavy Samurai over here, and this is like two days before the fucking ban list got revealed. You see Super Heavy, Super Heavy Samurai over here still maining the one Gamma. Now they are doing Puppet Lock, which, you know, kind of funny that they, you know, they chose Puppet Lock over Exterio, right? Because that's how good Puppet, Puppet Lock is, um, especially with the um, Gimmick Puppet Link just requiring any two monsters. But they were still on the one Gamma. And I think there's a lot of reasons for this. First off is that ultimately the ability for Super Heavy Samurai to play around hand traps does rely on Gamma, mostly. It relied on Gamma and it relied on Scarecrow. Both got hit on the ban list, meaning people will be more adamant about resolving or firing off hand traps and negates even when you have no monsters because Gamma's at one. People are gonna be like, okay, well, they probably just don't have the Gamma. So they're, so what's the point of me holding this hand trap, me holding this Ghost Ogre, this Ash, this, this Droll and Lockbird for when they have a monster when it's like Gamma is like inconsistent. And the answer to that is, is that if you do have the Gamma, it's better than just not drawing it at all. And even if you open up Driver in a deck like Super Heavy Samurai, there are still multiple ways you can use Driver. And so basically that's the idea behind some of the decks that I think can still use Gamma versus the ones I think that can't. It's like, if you don't mind opening a driver, like if you don't mind opening one brick and you have the card to play around more hand traps than you could normally, like for Super Heavy Samurai, I think this is kind of mandatory until Duelist Nexus comes out and maybe we may have more lines with Revolution, with Revolution Synchron that play around hand traps better. But as of right now, this is like, we still have to play Gamma in, in my opinion, because it's still better to open the Gamma and you know, not need it than to need the Gamma and not have it. Uh, especially since it's like Super Heavy Samurai loses to every hand trap in the book. If you don't open enough extenders, you are you are losing to a single hand trap. And then you, you, you have to get, you also have to think about Nib is coming back because now making Baron before your fifth summon is a lot less consistent. Oftentimes you'll need to make a Ballista, a Tilting Entrainment or um, some other card of that nature, right? Some other middle card, you know, to get into your Baron before you actually make the Baron. So now people can start playing Nib again. And it may not kill your entire turn, but like it may get to the point where it's really hard for you to play around certain things because you, you have less engine to work with thanks to, you know, Soul Pierce and not searching 10 times a turn. Um, I, I still think Ash, they have to wait to Ash you on, even on Soul Peacemaker, which people are starting to play at three, and this is starting to become a really big part of the super heavy combo. Um, I mean, it already was, but now it's even more significant because the scales revival effect is a lot more important than it, than it used to be. Um, ashing on the Soul Peacemaker can be very significant, but because you tribute the monster, let's say you open Piercer plus Peacemaker, if you tribute the piercer and they have the ash for it, but you have the gamma, that's like best case scenario. It's it, like, it's still better for you 
to have the gamma and not need it or not open it than it is for you to not play the gamma at all because they're going because it is the, the difference between super heavy samurai being able to build a board or not being able to win the game or not so that's why it's such a crutch card that even at one it's still worth playing so that's why i would say you should still be playing Gamma in Super Heavy Samurai. Like there are nine cards that can take advantage of the fact that Gamma exists, right? It's like your Wakashi on scale, bike in hand, and Peacemaker on tribute of your first monster. I want to talk about Pearly. Um, they, Delicious Memory got limited off the last, off the May ban list because them opening driver, they can discard it for any Pearly spell. It's not really a brick if you can just get rid of it and you can just, you know, get a uh, driver can just stay in the graveyard and you don't really have to deal with it being a brick. That's why they played Rainbow Bridge so much. If they drew the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, they could just discard it and search their field spell. I think Pearly should still be playing Gamma because if they are as susceptible to hand traps as people are saying that they are now, Gamma is still something that, again, because it can be a game deciding factor, whether this hand trap affects your starting combo or not, then Gamma is really important, even at one. Better to have it, again, have a small chance of it resolving than to not have it at all. Next, I want to talk about Dragon Link. And Dragon Link has played Gamma for a long time, pretty much as long as the deck has existed. It's always needed Gamma to play around Droll and Lockbird. And now the Droll and Lockbird sort of like, now the Gamma is limited, you know, people are going to be more adamant about Droll and Lockbirding against Dragon Link. And um, they're probably not going to be meaning Droll and Lockbird because it doesn't hit everything this format, but it does hit. Um, it still does hit Dragon Link pretty significantly. So it may still be in the side decks of a lot of people. And this is like one of those times where I think people should still be playing Gamma in Dragon Link because not only is it a instant negate for Droll, but it's also an instant way into Baron or into a level eight like Omega. I mean, we don't have Chaos Ruler, so I guess that point's kind of mute, but you know, having the Gamma anyway does not really hurt the deck. And even for Super Heavy Samurai, like any big combo deck that benefits off of a level eight synchro should still be playing Gamma, in my opinion, because you can just like if you have the steam to make a Lambda and make your opponent think that you have a Gamma in hand, even even if it's a complete bluff, just making your opponent think, oh, why would he summon Lambda now? Why would he sacrifice resources to summon Lambda now? unless he had the gamma. It's like, it's it might hold them back from activating particular hand traps during your turn, especially like, or they might just fire them off preemptively just to see if, if it's a bluff or not. Like if it's a Nibiru and you make Lambda, they might just nib you anyway to see it's like, okay, if he has a gamma, he has it. So yeah, I think Dragon Link, they are, it's good enough without gamma to where it may not need it, but if you really want to play to continue having certain cards resolve without worrying about Droll and Lockbird after those cards, like your Chaos Spaces and your Starly Saferts, then you should still be playing the one Gamma. You can discard the driver off of Dragon Ravine or stuff like that. So again, having dead cards in hand in certain decks is not a big deal. It's not the biggest deal in the world. As long as you have something to work with, you're fine. And I think Dragon Link, it's one of those decks where it's like, if you draw the driver, as long as you have a way to discard it, you're fine. And I think lastly, if you're a deck that loses to Dimension Shifter, there is no counterplay to this card going first anymore. Gamma was the counterplay. And now that Gamma's limited, Soul Pierce, uh, Shifter's still at three. I don't really get this decision, right? Like uh, OCG at least has Soul um, Shifter semi-limited, so they see it less often in their opening hand. At, like at the very least, you know, because Shifter is just such a broken card that like resolving it going first, even against like, it doesn't matter. Like, you could just shotgun Shifter. Like, it doesn't matter what your matchup is. It's still a good card to shotgun. Like, even even against, like, Kashira in the mirror match, even against, like, if you're playing a Flawanderese mirror match, it's still a good card to make sure your opponent does not have anything in Grave. If your opponent has something in Grave, they might be able to, like, recycle it, or they might be able to get, like, the, sh the effect of, like, Theosis or something. There's also less hand traps that they can activate, right? So, like, uh, DD Crow becomes useless, fucking, you know. Like, there's a uh, Droll becomes useless if you Shotgun Shifter. They they can't Droll your Pot of Prosperity. They can't Veiler you. They can't, you know, there's, there's a, so, like, you should continue playing sh um, Gamma if you really lose hard to Shifter. Like, I think if you're a Pendulum deck, you should still be playing Gamma. 
because you're a pendulum deck, you can make a scale, you can summon Gamma, a uh, driver if you draw it and, you know, link it or sync it away. And, you know, in the case that they have shifter, it's better that you have the Gamma for the shifter than it is that you just don't have an out to shifter. And the reason why it's like it's even better is because Gamma on your turn equals instant Baron. Gamma now on your opponent's turn, you never have to worry about it breaking you. You you open Gamma on your opponent, you know, and your opponent's going first, you never have to worry about it being a brick in your deck again, because you get rid of Gamma, you get rid of the driver, and that's it. You've gotten rid of two cards out of your deck and you've negated one monster effect. I think it's not something that you should take out of your list just yet. I'm seeing a lot of super heavy lists that are just completely engine, Ghost Ogre, Ash, Nib, maybe Valor. I think I saw Valor, but... I don't know. I don't think Valor's that great yet. I, I think you should still keep Valor away from the format because Shifter and Kashtir are still going to be two of the biggest decks. Now I kind of want to talk about decks that are sort of in flux. Like I think that don't need Gamma anymore. They're sort of in flux and it's a little interesting to see like how they may evolve without Gamma. Where I think like Despia at one point probably could have used Gamma to negate the Ash Blossom on the Branded Fusion. I think now it's like, in theory, Despia could still play Gamma. They could still play Gamma for that one scenario, but the deck has more ways to make their fusions now without Branded Fusion. Fusion deployment into Cartesia. I, I'm starting to see people play Branded in white, and you do also have the Branded in red. It's not like the best case scenario to get ashed on your Branded Fusion, but like, because Despia needs so much engine to work and your non-engine has to be really, really, really significant. I think maybe sacrificing two places in a Despia list might be too much to ask for just one Gamma. If it, if it was three Gamma, it would be like, yeah, we're lit, you know, because you could recycle the driver um, using something like Lubellion and in case your board ever gets cleared again, you have that Gamma still in your, you know, a second or third Gamma in your hand. Now I think it's really play, player preference. I can understand why you might not want to play Gamma in Despia because I think the engine is strong enough to where it can play around those hand traps. I, I think that that's why I'm like super heavy and pearly. I don't think these are, these decks are strong enough to play around multiple hand traps now versus uh, Despia. I think is you know something that can play around multiple hand traps, assuming it has the right engine pieces. I know it can play around Droll and Nib. Ash Blossom plus another one might be game ending for them. So yeah, I'm I'm still not too familiar with Branded and I'm still cooking up that Branded Gate Guardian list. There is, I, I have start looking into, uh, I have started crafting combos like, you know, Keeper of Dragon Magic in Gate Guardian, I think might be able to work, but we'll see. We'll see. Cash Jira doesn't need Gamma. I think it could be funny to resolve Gamma in Cash Jira, but I think the reason why you wouldn't want Gamma is because not not because it's not a significant card, but because one, you don't auto lose to your opponent resolving shifter and two, you don't lose to Droll that often. Unicorn into Theosis is a kind of significant combo, but Unicorn into Theosis, like hitting hitting them with Droll once they search Theosis might be really significant. They can just sit on Unicorn plus Fenrir. I think it's really unnecessary for Cash Jira players because now your worst case scenario is that you draw Gamma or Driver while you control a Rise Heart or while you already control your field. And you sort of need your hand traps, right? Like Cash Jira does not build a lot of negates. Most of its interaction comes with its non-engine. And if its non-engine doesn't work while it controls its boss monster, a Rise Heart, which is going to sit on the field, the entire game once it's summoned. I don't think that's something that you should be, you shouldn't be crutching on a card like Gamma other than to help you start your turn. Kashira doesn't really need help starting its turn. So I think Kashira probably doesn't need to play Gamma. I could be wrong about that. I'm, I've am i only just started playing this with Gate Guardian and Kashira Gate Guardian profile coming soon. Mathmech does not need Gamma. I know they lost the two circular and now they need to crutch more on searchers. They need to crutch more in Sign Up Mining, Small World, Sign Up Codec. Because Gamma does lower the potential ceiling of the deck, uh, you won't be able to summon Transcode the turn that you resolve Gamma. It's a lot harder. And Mathmex sort of needs those extenders, or Cybers in general, needs those extenders to play around hand traps. 
I think maybe it might be harder for a deck like Mathmech to find space for it because it's a you're playing a lot of engine. You have enough extenders to where you can play around those hand traps anyway. Like Circular does not need to resolve for Mathmech to be broken, but it does it does certainly help. It does certainly help. Like it, it's it's your easiest way into super factorial plus you know access code OTK. It's it, it is the easiest way into both of those things, and it being at one does reduce the probability of you searching or getting to those things, but like the, all that means is you're playing more copies of either microcoder or Cyanet codec to search circular. Or you can play the firewall phantom. I know some people don't like it because it's level five, but you know, you summon it off defensor, you search Cyanet mining once it once it's linked away and you should be fine. Labyrinth is a deck I think does not need Gamma at all. Not because Gamma couldn't be significant in the deck or not because they can't use all late synchros, but because there are going to be times where they want more back row than anything. And then playing non-engine hand traps is not going to really help them out because they would have rather seen a compulse or they would have rather seen a floodgate rather than the gamma. Um, they also don't need gamma to um, start. Like it, like there's nothing really significant against the deck that stops them from starting. Um, maybe except Ash Blossom on the Welcome Labyrinth, but it's, it's not necessary for them to play the one of gamma. It's not a game changing card. So I don't think Labyrinth needs to be playing Gamma. Last but not least, I want to talk about Sprite. Now, Sprite is something people are going to start considering again because one, Ibli is not banned. So Ibli lock can still be a thing. Even with Santa Claus in the format, it's like you're still going to have to waste your normal summon getting rid of the Ibli. So yes, people will be Ibli locking you. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Sprite runic um, talk. I'm seeing maybe not as much pure Sprite, but like Sprite is one of those decks where they really only need one starter to get going. Like you could limit every single Sprite card and the engine will still work. That's how strong the, the Sprite engine is, or that's how consistent the Sprite engine is, excuse me. Because you have so many starters like the Gishkis, you have the Nimble Beaver, you have Deep Sea Diva. The, the Gishkis are more like, you know, out there. They're more like if they really, really hit Sprite and people want to keep playing it, then you start going to shit like the Gishkis. But you have Beaver, you have Diva, you have um, lots of other cards that can go into each other. And you have the Melfis now as well. Um, so the Sprite engine is fine after this ban list. And the reason why I want to talk about Sprite here is because they it's also it was also a really big hit to Sprite. But when you limited Gamma, because they played three emergency teleport whenever they played Gamma, right? So that if I was a Sprite player and I drew e Tully, that's a starter. If I opened it like like a jet or a blue, that's an instant way into Gigantic or into Sprind or something of that nature. Or if I resolved Gamma during my turn or during my opponent's turn, it's like I still had the e Tully to fucking make it work. Right, like to, to use the other two copies from deck. Now with Gamma only being at one, not only does it lower the possibility of me opening it to, to stop my opponent from stopping my plays, but it also completely makes Emergency Teleport irrelevant because there is no other good Psychic level two except for some of the Psy frames. And what we saw in OCG is that when once Gamma got limited, they started playing Delta and Epsilon. They started playing cards that were like more Okay, well, if we can't negate monsters, let's just hope that we can, you know, get Delta to negate spells, or we can get Epsilon to negate traps, you know, against Labyrinth and against Sky Striker. Now that they have to fucking engage and multi roll back up to three, maybe we should be playing Delta. Maybe we should be playing Epsilon now that Labyrinth is gonna kind of go unchecked in the format unless you're playing evenly matched or something. So maybe these cards are, are more significant in a Sprite deck if you want to play Itali. I think Gamma is one of those cards where I don't think Sprite loses immediately to Shifter being resolved. I think they can still play around it. They, they can't make Sprind if Shifter resolves, but they can still go Gigantic Sprite, maybe get a Red and a Carrot and sort of sit on a few interruptions. Red and Carrot do say Tribute, so they can still activate under Shifter, meaning it's less significant if a sh if they get hit by a Shifter compared to 
if they said send to grave and you know shifter pretty much killed all the potential that the deck had to make negates or combo off i would understand but because it is not a game deciding factor whether that hand trap whether that shifter or that hand trap resolves against sprite or not i don't think it is mandatory now i'm not saying i don't think you should you shouldn't be playing it but i don't think you need to play it sprite needs to play gamma to continue playing this format um you could still again because of emergency teleport and because delta and epsilon exist you could still play those cards to take full advantage of your emergency teleport and your driver and your gamma, right? Like if you open up emergency teleport, like maybe you'd, you'd want to dig for one of the Delta or the Espelon, uh, Epsilon before you dig for your gamma so that you get one of the less significant ones out of deck before you start, you know, before you potentially draw your gamma. And it's not like Omega does anything for Sprite. It's not like level eight synchros go, do anything for Sprite. The only thing you can do is if you happen to resolve um, Gamma on your turn, the only thing that the um, uh, that the Gamma and the Driver could make during your turn that's already in your engine is the Sprite Sprint anyway. And it's not even like Sprite Sprint is a hard card to make for the deck. So I don't think it's something that you should that you need to play. I think it might cause more issues than not. I don't think Sprite has a lot of ways to get rid of Driver from hand if they open it. So it's not like Sprite can draw bricks, right? Like if Sprite wants to draw a brick, like the brick should be like Pixies or like Gamma Burst. Like those should be the bricks that Sprite draws. It shouldn't be fucking Cyframe Driver, <laughs> especially when like there are other level two monsters now that can sort of work better with your engine than Driver and Gamma, Epsilon and Delta. But I mean, Emergency Teleport's a great fucking extender. Like at the end of the day, this is still a great fucking extender. And if you want to make it work, you're going to have to play the Delta or, or the Epsilon because there are no other good level two psychics. <laughs> like I've I've checked. There are no other good level two psychics. Um, if you want to continue playing e -Tele, you have to play the Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Well, maybe not Epsilon, but at least the Gamma and the Delta. That's really all I have to say about Gamma for now. It's like, what do you guys think about the potential of Gamma, this format? Do you think it should be taken out of all these lists altogether because the one of is kind of copium? Or do you think like I'm kind of spitting here and, you know, only certain decks that need to play around those hand traps should be playing Gamma? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.